Today's session, we're going to talk about the Centrify Cloud Suite. So our Cloud Suite is part of the Centrify platform, which consists of four different silos. Our Centrify Vault Suite, the Centrify Cloud Suite, Centrify Server Suite, and Centrify Privilege Threat Analytics Service. Today, as we talk about the Centrify Cloud Suite, there are actually going to be three different categories that we're going to cover. That will be our authentication service, our privileged elevation service, and finally, auditing and monitoring. So what sets our architecture apart from other vendors? Well, we're platform-based. Our, our solution was built in the cloud for the cloud. So what does that mean? So if you're using us as a SaaS provider, that security as a service, you don't have to worry about additional infrastructure. That you don't have to worry about bringing up other LDAP providers to, to, and having the infrastructure for that. You don't have to worry about building large, expensive vaults on-prem and managing all the servers that go with that, or multiple jump boxes. We can manage all of that for you from the service. And because it is a service, and because we are API-based, integration becomes simple and easy that you can take all of your existing automation and bring that to our platform and connect directly with our APIs. And what that does, it allows us to take multiple services, even your third-party PAM providers that you have today, and be able to hook them directly into the platform. What we find is most people today have a network and a cloud environment that looks very similar to what you see here on the screen. We have identities everywhere across multiple cloud, cloud platforms. These platforms have all different types of ways of granting access to your workloads. And what we'd like to do, and what we've chosen to do, is go out and actually simplify that and make things very simple from a single pane of glass, both from administration and from a user's perspective. Our Centrify platform is cloud agnostic. We're able to reach out to multiple cloud providers, whether it's AWS, Azure, Google, Oracle, or a private cloud provider of your own. What we're able to do is reach out to multiple cloud providers using our connector technology and bring all of that into the central platform. That platform also then can talk back internally to your Active Directory or other identity provider in your corporate network. By doing this, we also are able to install clients and using a client-based solution, those clients will be able to then authenticate directly back to the platform and brokering the identities into your corporate network we are able to provide granular host-based access controls and host-based session monitoring and auditing. So let's see it in action. On my screen, what you see right now is the login to the portal. And very simply, you can use your Active Directory credentials. And one of the things that we like to talk about is when you're using a cloud-based service, is you actually want to make sure that you're applying multi-factor authentication wherever and anywhere that is appropriate and necessary. Now, when we're doing multi-factor authentication, we have multiple options available to us. For this exercise, I'm going to go ahead and use a text message, which is going to come to my mobile device, and we'll go ahead and authenticate through the text. It takes just a second. And then if you can see that, we'll go ahead and actually click on the link. And you can see that the Centrify app is asking me for authentication. I'll go ahead and hit Approve. And here on my screen, you'll notice that it automatically advances and is now asking for my Active Directory password. And once multi-factor authentication is complete, I then can get into the portal. Now, one of the things that we talk about and one of the things that is a, a real benefit to using the Centrify platform is that we can actually broker multiple identity sources. So whether that's Active Directory, whether it's a, an LDAP source like Oracle, or a federated service like Okta, we can then be able to use all of the options you see here on the screen and use them all simultaneously to federate your identities and to broker those identities out to your cloud platforms. Now, when we're talking about authentication and multi-factor, like you just saw here, and as we'll demonstrate further going forward, there's plenty of options available. As you can see here, we have two options 
uh, for multi-factor authentication. Our first option, we can either have somebody use their multi mobile authenticator, phone call, text message, email, OAuth, uh, a third-party radius authentication. So if you have something that is not uh, native, but it does speak radius, we can actually integrate our systems with your already existing MFA device. Or we can have just simple security questions. If we need further identification and we want to increase that multi-factor authentication, we can actually add in second qualities as you can see here below. For today's example, we're just going to go with the one. Now, from an administrative standpoint, when an administrator first logs in, we have a dashboard. And the dashboard is here that can give you multiple guides to what's happening in your environment. So in this particular case, we can see people who have tried to log into the system and where they've failed. However, with other dashboards, we can count, look at the logins, where people have logged in, what they've been doing. And we even here have a map off to our right and we can see here that we have different lo people logging in and what those logins are. And you can actually drill into this and you can see the total number of logins. So we had 95 logins today out from 17 different people and none of those from this particular location required multi-factor authentication. You can also specify how long you want. We can look at the last 24 hours or we can look at the last seven days. And lastly, from the dashboards, we can get an overview of the entire environment and what is taking place uh, for active sessions at that time. So let's talk a little more about multi-factor authentication and just-in-time. I know that's a big thing that everybody has talked about, what we're going to do for just-in-time, and that means we're only going to give just the right amount of access for just the time that is needed. Again, this particular use case, I have a Windows box uh, that's out in AWS, and I'm going to need to access the administrator account. This is the local administrator account. And I'm going to simply request login. Okay? Notice I don't have the ability to log in directly. I'm going to actually have to get permission to do that. By requesting login and selecting this, I can pick a window of time uh, that I need the, this access for. And so I'm going to pick the next hour going forward here. And we have to specify a reason why I need this access. And then I'm going ahead and, and submit that request. Now, using our workflow that's built into the platform, I can actually then specify what managers or who in their chain of command could go ahead and approve this request. Those requests would then be able to come through and they would be seen on the following screen. As you can see here, right at the top, here's the request for the administrator access on that server and this is the person, myself, who's asking for it. We would go ahead and click this and then say approve. At this point in time, the approving manager can actually demonstrate that they can verify all the information that I put in, and they can actually alter it. So if I ask for too much time and I'm outside the change window, that person, that managerial person or administrator can then reset the time that I'm allowed to have access to this machine. By hitting submit, that will go back into the system and then release that access to me. Now back here as a user, coming back and trying to go ahead and get access to that system, I'll quickly reload my rights. This will happen automatically over a minute's time. Uh, for the sake of our demo, I'm going to go ahead and speed this up. And then if I come here and I actually right click on this, you'll see that now I have the ability to log in. And by clicking on login, my session will start and I'll actually be able to gain access to that system. Now this is only good for the time that I specified, and when that time expires, I will not be able to create any new sessions to access this machine. Additionally, when it comes to multi-factor authentication, every user has a workspace. And the workspace is where your developers or your operations team can come to do their daily information 
and get their daily work done. So in this particular case, um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to try multi-factor authentication on this particular Linux box. And here, through our portal, I'm actually going to type in my username and my Active Directory credential. You'll notice the same kind of MFA prompt that we saw when I first logged into the portal uh, is now right here on the screen on our Unix, Unix system. And again, I will choose choice two, which will give me an SMS message. And we'll wait for my phone to wake up. And you can see the text message came in. We will authenticate to my phone. Clicking the link will take me out to the Centrify site for that authentication. I will approve it. And it says authentication successful. Coming back here to our Unix system, I'll go ahead and hit enter to continue. And you see that I now have access. So again, you have multi-factor authentication at multiple levels throughout the process. So I can have multi-factor authentication on my Linux system at the point of login. I have multi-factor authentication at the platform level. And we can even take that even further and take that down to the command level. I know not everybody is a Unix user. This also works for Windows. So what I'll do here in this particular demonstration is for our Windows system, it'll work very much the same way. I'm going to say go ahead and use my account. This will open up a Windows 10 system. You can see here on the screen, it's prompting me. It has already inserted my name through the platform. Again, multi-factor authentication is, is showing up here as well. We'll do a, another SMS text message. And then it's going to ask me to continue the process again. And there is our message. Go ahead and click the link. We'll hit accept. And the authentication has been completed. You'll notice that the screen automatically advanced in Windows and it brought me into my Active Directory password. And now I'm in my Windows workstation. And lastly, there's one other option. So if we don't want to have to type in credentials and we don't need multi-factor authentication, we want our users just to be able to access the system directly using the credentials that they used when they logged into the platform. We can actually forward that credential and forward that ticket onto the existing systems directly. This way we're obfuscating the passwords that are going out to those systems. So uh, for the identity broker, system right here, we'll go ahead and click on this. We'll come to actions. And I'm gonna say use my account. You notice that I didn't have to type in my password, I didn't have to type in my username. So by forwarding on that credential and using that ticket, I already have direct access into that system. I can then perform whatever I need to do on the system without having to go through those extra steps. And lastly, just to finish up this session, we're going to talk about what we have for auditing. Now, all of these systems can be audited and recorded so that they're available later for playback and review and make sure that anything that's going on can be recorded. So here on my dashboards, I'm going to come here and I'm going to pick my overview. And you can see here with my overview that I have multiple sessions that are available. So if I needed to monitor any of these, I can go ahead and select a session. I can take the care of the actions and I can go ahead and I can watch that session. Now this will take, even though it's being recorded in the background, this will be taking care of anything that's happening at that particular point in time. So then I can come back to my session 
And as I'm typing here on the left, you can see that it's appearing on the right from the recorded session. So anything that is taking place is being recorded and logged. Now, if I am a person who's monitoring activity or I have a system that's going on and I don't like what's being taking place, I can come over here to my actions and I can actually terminate that session. And you saw them note that it was terminated up here. So if I come back, you'll see that it says your login session has been closed by the administrator. So at this point in time, that person who is on the system doing whatever activity they were, it's been terminated and they were notified that it was done by the administrator. As you can see, we can provide access to multiple platforms all from a single pane of glass. And with this and the configurability that we talked about earlier, we can meet all of your PAM needs. If you're interested in more information about this, please visit www.centrify.com or reach out to your salesperson and they will be happy to give you more information.